All right, over here at the top left-hand side of Belshear Beach is none other than Slayer's Yu-Gi-Oh. Very strong versus Protoss and Terran's, as, I'm sorry, Zerg's as well, other Zerg's, but sometimes not able to pull it off against Terran players. And here is our Terran opponent for him. It is none other than Enesosa's Sculp. Down here at the bottom right, and yeah, like I said, very, very important game. This is the third match. Remember, this is this is the round of 48. This is the first round of Code A. You lose in this round and you are completely out. You have to go through the rigorous requalification process. You have to beat so many strong players in the qualifiers in a row in order to get in. And I mean, think about the players that have already been eliminated so, thus far this season. There's going to be such strong, strong players. I mean, you know, if you guys were watching earlier, hopefully you guys are watching the VODs in order if you uh, haven't been watching them, but earlier we had none other than Startail Bomber eliminated, eliminated from Code A. So Startail Bomber is someone that you might meet up, you know, that's, he's someone that you might expect, uh, who I would have expected in the past to be someone in the round of eight of the Code S or something like that. And instead, he's going to be meeting up against someone in the Code A qualifiers. So, yeah. Very, very difficult to qualify here, so this is really Sculpt's big chance, and Yu-Gi-Oh! does not want to have to get back into Code A again. I think he's actually, I'm going to try and double check, but I think he's actually had to qualify a couple times. Let's see if we can find that out here. <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, so we're just going to see a quick expansion here out of uh, <clears throat> Yu-Gi-Oh! He did get gas, I'm sorry, his spawning pool as well. And just a standard barracks wall off here with gas as well. We, I'm sure so if we're going to see the same thing, probably going to see the same thing as last time for Sculpt Reactor Italian Expansion is what I'm expecting here. In fact, it looks to be almost exactly that. Yep, there's the reactor. Pretty much the same build as before. Overlord's going to try and sneak in the back here. And scout for the gas basically is what he's doing. And Sculp wisely took this gas down at the bottom of his base instead of the one at the top. So it's not going to get scouted by that overlord. <clears throat> so that was a clever little thing that he could do. And um, yeah, so Sculp now scouting Yu Gi Oh's base. Sees what he's up against. And I'm curious if we're going to see Sculpt be really aggressive with these Hellions like we did last game. And oh no! <laughs> oh, he had lifted it. And uh, <laughs> he's blocking it from landing again. He didn't make a Marine first. So <laughs> he's actually going to have to move the barracks over to the side here. He's going to make a tech lab with it. That is really interesting. And he's actually going to show that. Okay, no, he's not going to show the tech lab. Okay, this is kind of cool. Uh, he didn't build the tech lab yet. Hellion is now out. He's going to be able to take care of the... Actually, it looks like the SCVs. Yeah, the SCV took care of that. Um, now that the Zergling's dead, he's going to make a tech lab on this barracks and switch over to the starport and probably get some Banshees is what it looks like, I guess. Unless he's going to go for maybe get a Raven and get auto turrets. Or, I, I'm not sure exactly. We're, we're going to see. Um... A little bit interesting of a build. I haven't really seen this too much before. He is going to switch over that, and we're going to see immediately a Panchi, probably. No, he's going to make a, a medevac. Okay. Well, I don't know why he waited to put it on the tech lab to make the medevac. Again, you know, I, I've got to say, Sculp, he, he's got really good macro and all, but he just has some sloppiness to his play. He could have made that medevac earlier. Um, <clears throat> you know, if he just not moved it over the tech lab, maybe he's going to plan on following up with a Banshee after the Medivac or something like that. I don't know, perhaps he scouted something with his Hellion that made him think he was a Medivac. That doesn't make a ton of sense to me. He is sending out these Hellions and again, trying to be very aggressive with them. Um, we've seen him kill a single drone thus far, um, but he only lost the one Hellion, I believe. Mm, anyway, not too certain about that, but I, I think that's... He only lost one or maybe two Hellions. Oh, and here comes this... Uh, Overlord coming in here. He is making that Banshee now. And the Medivac has been dispatched over here to the back of Yu-Gi-Oh's base. It's going to try and drop some Hellions in there. 
But the queens are already waiting. He's going to go ahead and divert. But I think those queens are on to him. And he is going to drop Hellions in the back. The Overlord sees the starport, by the way, so he knows the Banshee is coming. And is he going to respond, though? He's making Zerglings to deal with these Hellions, and the Hellions are here, and he actually doesn't pick up those Hellions. He could have picked that up before it died uh, if he'd been on top of things there. And now the Hellions are actually just going to get coordinated and die because he didn't pick them up in this medevac either. So still some sloppy play from... Uh, our Terran player, but he may be able to accomplish something regardless because the Banshee is heading across the map and we didn't see any reaction at all to the Banshee being scouted by Yu-Gi-Oh. He didn't make any extra queens. He, isn't, he has an Evo Chamber, but he hasn't made any spores. He only has one queen at each base. And, um, I mean, if it's just a single Banshee without cloak, one queen is alright, but... You know, if he decides to be aggressive like he has with these Hellions, he could just target down the um, target down the queen basically, and some Zerglings are going to get into the front here and just kill off some SVs. See, he didn't have those Hellions, so he's vulnerable to these kind of attacks. He had a couple of Hellions, obviously, and they're going to clean up these SVs. I'm sorry, clean up the Zerglings before too long. And again, Yu Gi Oh! not canceling his buildings. That's the second time we've seen Yu Gi Oh! not cancel something um, like a hatchery and just got killed like that. So again, a couple of mistakes being made by Yu-Gi-Oh as well, and uh, Banshee's going to go around the top here. I'm really surprised he hasn't done anything. He finally notices this medevac is chilling up here, and he's going to go in and try and kill some drones. I guess not. He's still maneuvering Hellions around the front here, worried about these Zerglings attacking. Uh, again, a little bit of a lack of multi-attacking. Oh no, he gets completely caught off guard, not even microing his units, because he's microing his uh, Banshee here. Zero. Absolutely zero multitasking from Sculpt may cost him this crucial third game. Um, yeah, now he's under attack in his natural expansion. It looks like he may clean this up eventually, but he lost his Banshee. He sent in the Banshee, was microing the Banshee, and didn't micro his Hellions, and then went to micro his Banshee, and uh, uh, then went to micro back in his home base and lost his Banshee because he wasn't microing that either. This is just, uh, this is turning into another train wreck here for Sculpt. And, um... <clears throat> Yeah, this is this is not good at all. Oh, and he's just gonna finish it. He's gonna bust him. Uh, more Zerglings being produced by Yu-Gi-Oh. He's got a lot of Banelings morphing here. Oh no, they're gonna get caught by these Hellions though. That may be the key if he can start killing some of those. Nope, he backs off, and they those Hellions are trapped actually. They're just gonna try and get. Them. Oh, never mind. There's another back is there, but he's just gonna kill that depot. And Banelings are gonna run into the main Zerglings as well. The Hellions been dropped up. There's nothing they can do. The SCVs are kind of clumped up. Is he going to get some good kills off? He gets some kills and... Oh, just... Some splitting going on with the SCVs, but <laughs> not enough. This is just... Wow. So, um... Yeah, Sculp... Sculp showed us some really good play at times. He showed us some really good strategies. He showed us some new things. But in the end, he's going to have to um, go home to the NSOSO house and really concentrate on his um, multitasking if he's going to be able to succeed in Code A the next time he qualifies because uh, he's just been making too many mistakes to uh, actually be able to function at this level. And yeah, he's just going to go down right here. 33 supply to 78. He's got one base barely mining with mules and a couple SCVs. And, uh, you know... Yu-Gi-Oh has everything. This Viking's just chilling around here, but it's not going to do much good. Last ditch Banshee is going to try and do some counterattack damage, but um, we're going to see Skull eliminated in his first appearance in Code A. Unfortunately, like not get that factory. Yeah, it's the factory. Yeah, this is this is this is not good at all. 15 supply to 70, 87. Look at this, he can't even close the wall off. There's the GG, finally, from Sculpt. Sculpt has been eliminated, and Yu-Gi-Oh! from the Team Slayers is going to advance to the next round of Code Alright, and that will do it for our third match. We had really close matches in our TVT in Match 1. Really close match in, TV, in our PVZ in Match 2, but... Sculp was just no match for Yu-Gi-Oh! in match 3. He did manage to win a game, but, uh, yeah, just could not pull off the win. Just was a little bit too sloppy to deal with a former Codex player. 
like Yu-Gi-Oh. So that's going to do it for match number three. We still have one match to go, and it should be a much better match, I imagine. Virus versus Saison, two players who we've seen before, um, who are not tip-top players, but I think are going to be a good match for each other. So and we're not going to see quite the level of uh, mistakes being made that we saw from Sculpt that last game. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, I am Moltrap. We're going to give the players about 5-10 minutes to get their gear set up before we move into the last match. So, uh, you know, you can go get yourself a snack if you want. Go to the restroom if you need to. But don't go anywhere too far because we're going to be back with some more StarCraft action in just a few minutes. <laughs>